Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll be looking at how to recreate this rocket flying animation using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that I have here is I've downloaded a image from FreePick. Now this is a vector graphic and inside the vector graphic you can see all of the different layers. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that all of these elements are on different layers and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing is to make sure that you expand all of the layers until you can actually see which layer you're dealing with. And then all you have to do is just press on the new layer um, button down there and then you can just drag it and now that's in a new layer. So you don't need all of these uh, planets. So maybe get rid of the ones that you don't want and then just put everything else into a new layer. So I'm going to show you that step now really, really fast. So now once all your planets and stars are on different layers, what you want to do is you just want to click on them and move them away from the edges. You don't want any edges um, overhanging because that will be cut once you bring it into After Effects. So now what you can do is you can actually delete the planets that you don't want. So all you have to do is just drag it to the bin um, or you can just press delete on the actual layer like that. So maybe we'll get rid of a few over here we'll get rid of some of that maybe we'll get rid of that one as well cool once you're happy with your planets you then need to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file so to do that all you need to do is go to file save as and save it as a AI file you also need a rocket as well now the rocket again I downloaded from FreePick and I've separated the parts I've got the main rocket section there but what's very important is you need to make sure that you have separate flames so that we can animate that separately. So once you're happy with that, you can save that as an Adobe Illustrator file as well and we can import it into After Effects. We need to then import our assets into the After Effects timeline. So we can do that by right-clicking and going import and putting those two Adobe Illustrator files in there. And once you've done that, you want to import it as a composition and we can leave it as layer size because we'll change the resolution a little bit later. So you need to make sure you import your rocket and you import your space background. So now that we have our space background and rocket both imported. Now, so once you've imported your space background, you need to double click on the space background and we're going to come over here and we are just going to go into our composition settings and we are going to change it to 1920 by 1080. Then we're just going to press OK. So now we've made our composition settings much larger than our document. So what we need to do is we need to come over here and create a new null object. And we're just going to grab all of our layers and we are going to grab the parent uh, and pick whip and we're going to pick whip it to the null object over here. Then we're going to press S for scale and then we're just going to increase it so it looks and fits on the screen. So now if we've done that correctly, all the planets will fit on the screen. Now you might lose a little bit of quality. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you click this icon over here, which is continuously uh, rasterize. And if you don't see that, you can just toggle the switches from down there. So now once we have our space background and everything is looking nice, you can move around some of the components. So another thing that you should do is you should really rename all these layers because it will make it a whole lot easier. Okay, so now once I've got all my um, layers labeled, the most important one is the stars layer because we need to duplicate that to get this animation to work properly. So the next thing that I need you guys to do is I want you to come over here and import your rocket and then double click on your rocket layers. So here I have my rocket and I'm just going to go and paste it into my uh, space background scene over here. So I'm just going to control V to paste it and I'm just going to put it right there in the middle so now I'm going to rename those layers as well so this is going to be our flame and this is going to be our rocket to be honest we only need one flame because we can apply the same effect to the other flame as well so I'll just get rid of that for now 
So now once I've got my rocket and my flame here, I'm just going to bring it down so it's a little bit smaller. And what we are going to be doing is we are going to be pre-composing that and we are going to be working on the animation separately. So I'm just going to highlight those two um, layers right there. And then I'm just going to right click and go to pre-compose. And so I'm going to call that rocket. And so now when I double click the rocket, now I've got my rocket and my flame. So the flame, you know, we can move it around as well. Like we can link it back up to where it needs to go. I'm just going to hit continuously rasterize to make it a little bit better quality. But now what we need to do is we need to come over here and actually pre-compose that again. So I'm going to right click pre-compose. And so now when I double click that, now I've got this here. So now once I'm in my next pre-composition, I'm just going to create a mask. So to draw a mask, all you need to do is make sure you're on that right layer, click on the rectangle tool, and then you can draw out a rectangle like this. You probably want it three quarters of the way down. Then what you need to do is come over here to mask feather, and we're just going to increase the pixels on the Y axis. So I'm just going to bring it up to about 100. So that's going to make it a little bit um, kind of see through something like that. So now what we need to do is we need to create a mask path keyframe. So we're going to click that over there. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit and I'm just going to move forward in time. Let's say about 10 frames. And then I'm going to highlight these two parts of the mask. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to hold shift. So it looks something like that. And then I'm going to move forward in time another 10 frames and then repeat the process again, but this time bring it down. And then I'm going to keep on repeating that process for a few more frames. So bring that up. And then I will move forward another, let's say 10 frames. And then I'll bring it back down again. And then I'll move forward in time another 10 frames and then bring that up. All right, and then I'll press shift and page down and that will move forward 10 frames. And then I'll bring it down, shift page down, bring it back up and so on. And so now when you play that back, you can see we've got this flicker that's happening here to the, to the flame. And that's looking all right, but we want to increase the speed of that. So I'm going to highlight all the keyframes. I'm going to hold Alt and then I'm just going to shrink it down to about, let's say somewhere like that. So now if I play that back, it's got that, you know, kind of uh, effect happening. So if I want to shrink it even more to about one second, we can do that. And now we've got that cool looking flame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate these frames. Um, I'm just going to move forward a bit in time and then just duplicate it. And then I'm going to duplicate that again. And you want this to last for about five seconds or so. So I'm just going to do the same for that one last time and we'll, we'll leave it there. So now I've got that flame that flickers. It's looking pretty cool. So if I go back to my space background, you can see that it's flickering and then it's looking really, really nice. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure we go into the rocket pre-composition. So this one, and what we need to do is we are going to just expand this flame down a little bit, just like that. So it gives it a bit more of a flame. Now you don't have to do it that much, but let's just leave it with something like that. So now if I go back to my space background, now we've got a bit of a bigger flame and that's looking pretty cool as it is. So all we need to do is make sure that you're in the right pre-composition layer and we need to duplicate that by pressing control D and we need to highlight both of those flames, duplicate that again and we'll now move it over and put it under there just like that. So now we've got two duplicate flames and we've now just put them underneath the rockets uh, engines just like that. So if I go back to my space background, so now you can see that the flame is actually moving like that and it's looking pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is if we go into our rocket 
composition and we need to now add a little bit of a wiggle so to add the wiggle on the rocket we need to go to our rocket uh, layer we need to press p for position and then we need to hold alt and click on the stopwatch here now you can play around with some of these settings but i'm going to be using wiggle three comma let's say 15. and this is a bit of trial and error we can see what's actually happening so now if you look at it the rocket is moving around violently you know it's nearly like it's in space and the only other problem that we have here is now the flames don't move with that. So all we need to do is just make sure that we get all of our flames. We hit the pick whip and we drag it to the rocket. And so now if you've done that correctly, as the rocket wiggles, you can see that the flames also are attached to that as well. So that's looking really, really good. And so now if we preview this back into our space background layer, it's looking cool. So now we have to animate the stars and the planets. And this is pretty simple to do. So if we're ready to do the animation here, all it is is a simple move back to the start of the uh, animation, press P on our keyboard for position, and then hit the stopwatch, and then move forward in time five seconds. So we're gonna trim this comp, uh, this work area to about five seconds of an animation. I'm gonna right click trim comp to work area. And then all we are going to be doing is moving the planet down so i'm just going to hold shift and have it down just like that so now you can see that the planet is moving like that and so we're going to repeat that for the rest of the planets So cool, so once you have your planets moving down and you know, you've got a little bit of order like that, the next thing that we can do is we can come over here to our stars. So I'm just gonna duplicate the stars, let's say three times. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to press P on the keyboard for position. And the first one I'm just going to move up on top of the second, or uh, well, the actual background. And then I'm going to do the same for the other stars as well. But this time I'm going to go and put it on top of that first layer as well. So now I've got three different stars in three different positions. So what I need to do now is I need to create a new null object. And I'm going to parent the stars to that null object. And so now if I close up all those, and then if I go to my position, all right, I can set the start of my position and click on the stopwatch there. And then I can move forward in time to five seconds. And now I can move all of those stars down. Now, the faster you do this, the faster the animation will look like. So you have to be careful with that. So right now, now I've got the stars moving down, the planets moving down as well. And it's looking pretty cool. The last thing I can do is just move this little UFO around here. So to move the UFO, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it wiggles a little bit. So I'm going to open up the expressions and add a little bit of a wiggle. Let's say 2 comma 20. So once you've done the wiggle on the UFO, what you can do is you can set a position keyframe and I'm just going to start it there at the start and I'm just going to move it up until it's off the screen, just like that. So now I've got this UFO that's kind of zipping around. The planets are, you know, coming down as well. And it's looking pretty cool. The last thing that we can do is come over here to our rocket and we can set a position keyframe for that. And I'm just going to move the rocket until it's off the screen. So to about there. And then I'm gonna move forward in time to probably about let's say one second, and then I'm gonna bring the rocket back onto the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put it in the middle of the screen just like that. I'm gonna highlight those keyframes, right click, and then make sure that they are easy ease keyframes. And then I need to come over here to the graph editor, and I just need to grab both sides and just bring them closer together until you have something snappy like that. So now that the rocket has come up, it stays and then you can even go forward, whatever you want it to do. So anyways, guys, that's about it for this simple tutorial on making a small and simple rocket animation. 
I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.